applying for a job at Apple, so he's being interviewed by our group. Yes. Let's say there's someone in my group A. Okay. A was supposed to be in the 9.30 interview slot. A was in San Francisco. Not having noticed this interview was starting up for was at 9.30. But he's never there before that. Wow. Hey, 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 hey. I was, I was explaining logistics. It's very boring. Uh, uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, it's September 2019. Uh, that means officially 2018. 2018. What am I thinking, 2019? Man, I'm just, I'm getting old. I've forgotten the, the years. They're just zooming past. I know why, because I was talking with someone else at work today, uh, and 2019 is the year that I will have been at Apple 30 years. So we were talking 2019. We were planning stuff. We were thinking about what to do. Uh, so I got 2019 in the brain, I guess. Um, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, we've got a, it's a light, it's a light show tonight. Uh, we didn't do a lot of planning for it. And by didn't do a lot of planning for it, I mean, I got home at like 6.30 and then we ate our soup. And then I was like, well, I guess we better go to the studio. And then I grabbed all the pieces of paper from last month that I didn't have time to get to. And then I wrote a couple more things for this month. And that's the show, people. That's the show. It's the quality kinds of things we do for you. Um, also, the show's going to, it's not going to be a good show. Uh, because, as you know, pre-show ritual, uh, I go into, the, go into the restroom and I wash my face before the show. I wash my hands. I do other stuff in there, too. No details. Um, uh, I got in there to wash my hands, and there was no pink soap. It was this weird, clear, herbal fragrance soap again. Not, not the good pink soap that smells like what clean should smell like, like the personification of clean, like, the, like if you had a smell dictionary, which I don't think they do, but I mean, like dogs, dogs probably have a smell dictionary with like every smell, and then next to it there's what that smell means. And in the dog dictionary, There'll be this this pink soap smell. You'll you'll put your little claw across it, and then you'll <laughs> sniff it like a dog would, and you'll go, yeah, that's clean. That's what the smell of clean is, uh, which dogs hate because clean involves baths, and dogs, as I understand, like nothing better than rolling around in the mud and and being filthy, uh, but lovable. Filthy but lovable is, I guess. I'm not gonna talk anymore about that. Uh, it's just. Uh, September to me, September starts, uh, as you know, with Labor Day. Uh, Labor Day, uh, for me coming from Wisconsin, Labor Day is the official end of summer holiday. Uh, in Wisconsin, you you mark the, the summer season as starting at Memorial Day and extending all the way through Labor Day. Um, in Wisconsin, uh, unlike here, school doesn't start until after Labor Day. So that, that's your summer. Usually you're out around Memorial Day and then you have the whole time until Labor Day to run around and kick cans and play weird tag games. Um, I, that's what I did as a kid. We didn't have computers. Uh, these days, as I understand, uh, summer is when you get to play Fortnite eight hours a day as opposed during the school year when you can only play it for three hours a day. Um, so for Labor Day, uh, we the last couple of years, uh, we're we're trying to set up traditions, and by traditions I just mean if we do the same thing every year, maybe people will catch on and start doing those things with us. So we now do like a Labor Day party, and a Memorial Day party, and a Halloween party, and sometimes a Fourth of July party if we're in town. Uh, and for all of those. Uh, especially Memorial Day and Labor Day. Uh, they're at our complex pool. We invite people over. We're like, come, bring your suits. You can swim. Uh, and only the people with children come and swim. Uh, and the rest of us adults without children, uh, we show up and we sit in chairs and we drink alcoholic beverages and I cook bratwursts and, and burgers and then I foist them off on people and then everyone leaves happy and then I cart somehow a thermos full of beverages back to my house 
even though when I carted that, beverages at parties are weird uh, as you get, I didn't drink a lot in college, I did drink some, but as I recall in college, you'd have a party and everyone would bring beverages and all of those beverages would be consumed during the party. Like no one at the end of a party was like, good Lord, we've got seven 24 packs of beer left, whatever will we do? Whereas now I, as a, an adult, an adult of advanced, advancing age perhaps, I will go out and buy beer for a party and then I will have the party and at the end of the party, somehow I have more beer than I bought for the party. Because everyone brings beer to parties and no one drinks as much beer as they brought because we all look at the situation and go, well, I think I'm gonna drink three beers, so I'd better buy 12 so I don't look like a cheapskate. Uh, and then what happens is I end up with a thermos full of beer, mostly, and some wine that I cart back to my house and I leave there until the next party. When I drag it back over, uh, some of the beer, in my case, gets put to good use in that I take the beer from the previous party and that's what I boil the bratwurst in because that's how you make bratwurst people, you boil them in beer. But for the most part, I have this growing collection of elderly alcohol. Um, and it, it kind of, I mean, I understand why people aren't drinking some of it because it's just looking a little older every time. Um, like I have this, uh, I bought a bottle of uh, apple cider, the bubbly stuff, because someone was coming and they were like, well, we don't drink. And I'm like, well, we'll have stuff. And they're like, well, well, we don't drink soft drinks. And I'm like, we'll have water. And they're like, do you have anything else? And I'm like, I will come up with something. So I bought some apple cider for them and then they didn't come. So now this same bottle of apple cider keeps going back and forth. Uh, at some point, I'm assuming that apple cider will start to ferment uh, and it will in fact become alcoholic again. It's my hope. Um, but every year the label looks a little yellower than it did the year before. And at this point it's a game. I just want to see if anyone will drink it. You know, it's, and if they do, I want to ask them why. Like, what were you thinking? Like, you, you saw what this looked like. What, what made you assume it would be good to drink? Um, oh, that's, and that's our Labor Day party. Uh, we've done it often enough. Uh, I have other friends that have parties and they're like, we're really stressed out about the party. And I, I have gotten to the point that I don't stress out a lot. I kind of know, well, the day before I will go buy bratwurst and then I will take them over there and leave them in the clubhouse. Then we'll drag the grill over and then we will buy a couple bags of chips and then people will bring the rest of the party with them and no one will go home hungry, I hope, unless you the person that wants to go home hungry. And even then we probably try to make you eat something. Ah. It's kind of a well-worn thing and I've watched other people talk about parties and they're very stressed and they're very, they're like planning it weeks and weeks in advance. And I was trying to figure out why are they so stressed and I am not really that stressed. And then it occurred to me, uh, it's because they are actually like making a lot of food and doing a lot of stuff for their parties. Whereas all I am doing is buying chips and then grilling bratwurst and burgers. It kind of works for us. Uh, if you know us, you should come to our parties. They, they are, I'm told, reasonably enjoyable. Uh, and a lot of fun people come. And then we sit around and drink beverages, as I told you. Um, I have a Honda Accord. Um, it's, it's been my car for a long time. Uh, I realized uh, I bought it in September of the year 2000, which means it is now 18 years old as a car. Uh, and when I bought it, like it was really the first new car that I'd ever bought for myself. And so I was very proud of it. It was a nice, it was a shiny Honda Accord, had all the fancy new features for its day. V6, green, nice leather seats. I was happy with my car. 
Uh, I was so happy with my car that I got my own custom license plates. They say Mac OS 9, which at the time I was like, this is great, man. It's the most advanced operating system which I work on on the planet today. Uh, now it's 18 years later. I still have the Mac OS 9 plates in the car. Uh, and like Mac OS 9, uh, the car has aged. Uh, it, is, it is no longer a nice new vehicle. Like about two or three years ago, I guess they, they paint the car, and then they put a clear coat of something over the car to protect the paint. And that clear coat started coming off a couple years ago. So now my car has this weird mottled appearance. Some of it is still a little bit shiny like it used to be. A lot of it is just a flat, dull green. Some of it has started to have tiny flecks of rust in it. Um, five or six years ago, I was backing out of a parking space and I hit a pillar. So I have this dent in the front panel, which I am too cheap to fix. Because I went over and got a quote, and the guy was like, well, that's like $1,400 to fix. And I'm like, American dollars? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, that's... That's more than the car's worth. And he's like, yeah, no one fixes that. I don't know why you brought it in. I was like, is there, like, is it cheaper to fix because it's old? And he's like, no, it's the same. I mean, it's, I got to pay a guy to take that thing off. I got to put a new thing on. You better fix it soon. I'm not going to be able to get that new thing anymore. I was like, any other options? And he's like, we well, could buy a new car. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <sighs> so I have the Mac OS 9 car, right? doesn't look good on the outside. Uh, uh, on the inside, uh, my seats have started to go. Like I got, I got some rips in, in my seat a couple years ago, which I tried to fix by buying one of them little miracle leather things off Amazon that like you see the TV commercials and they're like, five minutes, looks good as new. No, no, don't believe those things. Like I taped it up, it looked like crap. It looked like crap the whole time. Now that's all gone. And I tried to it's like, I'll, I'll get some nice, I'll get some fabric, you know, that high-end fabric tape that's the same color as the leather, and I'll just tape over things so at least it doesn't keep ripping. Uh, that turned out to be a bad idea, because when you put fabric tape down, it's great. It's stuck down for like three weeks. And then the edges will start to curl up, and then every time you sit on the seat, you will stick to the curled up edges of that tape until eventually when you sit down, you are just stuck to the seat, which I guess if there was an accident would be okay, because it would keep me from sliding around, because I don't think the airbag works anymore, just a guess. They've got a 10 year lifespan and I don't recall having it replaced eight years ago. Uh, so that, that vague adhesion in the seat is what's keeping me from dying if there's a crash. Um, now in the passenger seat, there aren't any rips, but a, a suspicious hole has developed. Uh, and I'm, I'm kind of wondering how this happened because there's, it's like there's a sinkhole in the seat like you see in Florida on CNN, but I have no idea how a sinkhole would form in a seat. Like what, what's the geologic process that causes leather to just kind of collapse in on itself and uh, large gaping hell hole to come up. Uh, I'm reminded of all of this because we have traveled some lately and so I have rented cars. Uh, and what this has reminded me of is that uh, like in many fields, uh, car feature sets have advanced far past where I think they should be. Like a while ago, I bought a doohickey for my car so that it would work with Bluetooth to where I could Bluetooth in and play stuff. And then I got very fancy, got a little microphone so I could talk on the phone in my car, even though I hate to talk on the phone and would never do it from my car or anywhere if I could get away with that. Now I'm in rental cars that have like large display screens and just magically pair with your phone and can show your phone on the screen and as you're driving down the road, if you're like, I want to go left, the car will go, beep, beep, there's a guy in your blind spot. And I was like, man, that would be a great feature. I wonder if I could buy a thing to put in my Honda Accord to make it go beep, beep, 
when no, that's probably not going to happen. So someday I'm going to have to buy a new car because the one I have, again, there's a sinkhole that's getting bigger every month. At some point, I assume the passenger seat is just going to open up and the entire car is going to fall through it. So I will walk out one morning and wonder where my car is and there will just be one passenger seat sitting there and then I will look at the hole and then I will see my car has been, um, <sighs> that's the car. Now the, on the other hand, uh, I am also, as you know, a, a cheap person uh, and I am holding out for a self-driving car. Uh, and those two things don't go together. Like, you can't really buy an actual full self-driving car today that's great. And you certainly can't buy it for cheap. And I don't want to spend a lot of money in a car. I don't drive very often. And I also don't want to spend a lot of money on a car that is like 70% of the self-driving. Because if... If things are the way they used to be, I am going to have this car in 2037. And in 2036, I'll be like, man, why did I buy a car in 2020? All of these, the, it doesn't have any of these features that I need. Uh, and my, I don't know what it would have. Maybe like the car could shave me because I, ah, self-driving cars. They are, we, we live in California. Uh, so we, we see self-driving cars driving around occasionally, and they are, they are not so common that we don't notice them, but they are also not so uncommon that I would go out of my way to look at them. Whereas I got to assume if you're in Wyoming and like a self-driving car just pulled around the corner of downtown, it would be followed by like a little gaggle of eight-year-olds running after it, pointing and laughing and having fun. This is a self-driving car. Let's follow it around town. Whereas here, uh, the eight-year-olds are playing Fortnite uh, and don't care about the self-driving cars and would certainly never leave the house to look at one. It's just a car, Mom. It just drives. You're keeping me from playing Fortnite, Mom. All my friends get to play Fortnite eight and a half hours a day. And I only get to play seven hours and 45 minutes. I hate you, Mom. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. That's as I understand uh, what's up with the kids these days. Um, uh, so recently, and by recently I mean last month, uh, we went on an unexpected uh, vacation slash thing. Uh, we had to go back uh, for a family thing. Um, but as you know, I hate to travel. So if I'm going to sit on a plane for six hours... Uh, I'm not going to turn around and get on a plane a day later and fly back. Um, so I took a couple vacation days, uh, and I spent three or four days in my old hometown, uh, Racine, comma, Wisconsin, uh, which I don't think I had been to for about 20 years. So that was, that was an experience for me. Um, I had a rental car, and... Uh, as it turns out, I flew in, and my parents had already left to go to the next thing. So they were like, just just go to the house. We'll give you the garage code, uh, and you can sleep there, and then you can meet us in Illinois tomorrow, which is what we did. Um, but so after the, you know, after that, I had basically three days when I was just in, in my house, my childhood home, kind of with the parents around, seeing some friends, driving around looking at stuff. Here's the weird thing. Uh, it was both a little bit different and an awful lot the same. Uh, like I, uh, I, I'm trying to exercise, so I went out for a jog, uh, and I pulled on my little jogging shorts, my little thing, I put on my suntan lotion, put on my hat, and I thought I'll I'll jog up to the park across the street from my elementary school because I used to have to walk to elementary school every day because it was the 70s and we weren't worried about our children being killed yet. 
So my mother was just like, well, there's where the school is. Go there. You'll, when school's over, come home. For God's sakes, don't stop and play in a puddle for two hours because I'll come looking for you, which she did once, which I didn't do a second time for reasons. Um, as a child, I recall the school being very far away in terms of walking. Like, it would take me a while to walk there. Uh, and in reality, the school is a four-and-a-half-minute jog from my house. And I'm not a fast jogger. It's kind of go half a block and a block and turn right, and that's the school. Um, I had mo... I have long assumed that every memory from before when I was 18 or 19 is gone down the memory hole with precious few exceptions. Uh, instead, I discovered I remember lots of things. Like halfway up that second block on the way to school, we just stopped having sidewalks because apparently the city was too cheap to put in sidewalks. Uh, and the city is still too cheap to put in sidewalks. So there's a point where the sidewalk just ends and now you're jogging on some guy's lawn uh, and then up at the top of the hill there's still that crazy apartment building with the weird gates that open and they have metal gates that open and then like 10 feet further they have a big garage door that goes up and down to get into the garage and as a child I thought that was the coolest thing they had these gates that would open, and then the garage door would go up. And now as an adult, I'm like, what are, what are the gates doing? Like, what, what possible value are those opening gates things doing? You got a garage door, like 10 feet further. You, I don't know why you need the, the opening gates. They still got them. They still got the opening gates. Uh, I wonder if the... I remember what the code was uh, from when my friend used to live there. You could type in and make the gates open and close. You couldn't walk in, right? We, we were just making the gates open as eight-year-olds because we thought it was funny. <sighs> uh, I jogged past my elementary school, which uh, thankfully has replaced uh, all of the children's play structures that I remember. Uh, it's the only thing that's different about the school whatsoever. Like everything else in the school is exactly the same. It's a brick building has almost no windows in the lower half of the school where the fourth and fifth and sixth graders are. And in the upper half, the kindergarten rooms are still there. I look through the windows. As near as I can tell, some of the same posters I think are still on the wall. Uh, they still had a, they still had this long strip of how to print cursive. I don't think anyone learns cursive anymore, but apparently maybe it's glued to the wall so they couldn't get it down. Um, uh, as a child, I recall, there used to be this sign. It was the most fascinating sign to me ever. Uh, it was on the side of the building, and it said, Reward for vandalism. You know, if someone vandalizes this and you report them, you are eligible for up to $50. And as a child, I thought, man, I, I need to get a friend. I need to convince that friend to vandalize the school. So I can turn that friend in and get 50 whole dollars. Uh, that sign is not there anymore. Uh, I can see in the wall where the sign used to be because there's this area of the bricks that are a different color than they used to be. Um, they probably had to take the sign down uh, because $50 was no longer, you know, valuable for convincing children to rat on their friends. Uh, and given that they'd changed nothing else at the school, they probably still couldn't afford anything more than $50. They just took the sign down, stop everyone's embarrassment. Um, oh, I did that, what? Uh, I wasn't much of a, I mean, I was kind of a, I was a nerd all the way back. Uh, so I did not exercise a lot as a child, uh, although in eighth, in ninth grade, I did go out for the track team. I don't remember why I went out for the track team. Um, I have, I honestly have no idea why I went out for the track team. Like there's, there's no way my parents encouraged me to participate in track. 
but for some reason, like one day, I was like, hey, I should join the track team and go out and run. And then I'm sure my parents were like, okay, if you want to do it, go ahead. Because I remember like a whole semester of three days of school after week, pulling my little gym shorts on and going out to the field. And then the coach would divide us up into three groups. And I, it didn't occur to me at the time, um, but I, I got divided into the group that I would call the, the telephone cleaners. Um, there were the kids that were actually fast, that actually should be on the track team, that showed promise. And they did a lot of track stuff at school. Uh, and then there was the second group of, I'm going to say, like, people that the coach wanted to keep his eye on. And so they would get told, okay, go out to the track and run wind sprints and miles. And then there was this third group, uh, and almost every day uh, after school, the coach would say, okay, and you guys, uh, I want you to run over to Crystal Springs Park and back. Uh, and I recall this being miserable. That'd be like 10 of us. And they would all start off on a little jog down the street, and then we would jog, and then we would turn left, and then there's Crystal Spring Park. And I recall it being ungodly far away. When we would turn around, we would come back. Uh, and then I would get back, and Coach would go, good exercise, everyone. Don't forget track meet next Saturday. Uh, and then next Saturday would come, and I would be assigned to like, hey, you're running the second leg of the half mile. Don't screw it up. Then I'd screw it up. Um, <sighs> so I remembered that. Um, we, uh, we visited a friend, a friend who I hadn't talked to in a long time. She had stayed there for a while. So we drove around town with her, and she pointed out various things, and we pointed to restaurants that we had eaten at as children that were gone, and we pointed at restaurants that, near as I can tell, have not changed a darn thing in 35 years. Um, I eventually drove up to Milwaukee because uh, we wanted to go to a distillery because uh, we're kind of alcoholics, and they had a tour. Uh, the distillery was nice. The distillery was great. We bought a bunch of booze. We had some drinks. It was nice. I, I guess, man, we're out of time. I did not think we were this close to the end. I didn't even get to half the stuff from last show that I had brought in, get to the factor crap cards. Well, we will see you all uh, October. I guess we'll be back in October, people, uh, and we'll, we'll continue stuff then. I can talk about the pheasant farm uh, that we visited down in Illinois that my, my cousin runs. But happy.